Hey guys, welcome back to 1922 Project. My name is Kelly, and if you are new here, we um, have been doing a little series on uh, t-shirt quilts, and today we're going to be putting together our quilt sandwich. So if you haven't watched the other videos, um, I'll, I'll link them down below. Go back and um, watch those first. Um, but today we're going to actually put what is called the quilt sandwich together. And I have a little tip for that that I've been using for years and years and it really helps make things a lot easier. Um, but first of all, let's go over what all we need. So obviously you need the top of your quilt, you need batting, and this batting, I don't do anything fancy. I've just got the Joann's Warm and Natural. Um, this packaged uh, batting usually comes, uh, or usually goes on sale like every other week or at least once a month. Um, so it's not that expensive. Uh, people have very strong feelings about batting. Um, it's kind of one of those things that you just have to try out and see what works best for you. I just wouldn't recommend using like super cheap stuff that's maybe like 100% polyester. This is not 100% cotton, but it's pretty close. I think it's like 80, 90% cotton. Um, so you do probably want it to be um, pretty heavy on the cotton rather than the polyester. So, but again, this is reasonably priced at um, Joann's. I would assume you can get it at Walmart too um, or online somewhere. But, um, you know, you could spend lots more money and get the super fancy stuff that you would get at a quilt shop or a fabric store. Um, that's not Joann's. Jo Joann's might even have something that's a little bit nicer than that. But I've always used that and it's worked great. I've never had any complaints. I have a um, quilt that I made for myself that I wash often and it has held up very well. So batting, top, and then you need the back. We haven't gone over the back yet, but let me just show you. I'm using this fabric um, because I had a ton of it and they wanted navy blue. You can absolutely get um, fabric that is like 108 wide and then you don't have to sew strips together. I had so much of this um, that it just seems silly to do that. So I measured out, so there's my seam right there. Um, and you kind of have to just do math to figure out, you know, is your seam gonna go this way or this way? And again, I would assume people have very strong opinions about which way it should go. Um, I just kind of do what makes more sense. Like this one, I couldn't have gone this way um, because my fabric is only, you know, 44 inches wide and I need quite a bit bigger than 80 inches long. So I sewed mine together this way and then I just pressed that seam to the side just like we did the top and then you're good to go. It does eat up a lot of fabric so it's probably a um, more inexpensive option to do the 108 wide. Um, and you can, they actually have that at Joann's. I think the first time when I first started quilting, they didn't carry it at Joann's, but they do now. Um, you know, limited choices. Probably if you want something special, you're going to have to look online. Um, but I don't, I think I've only used that once. I almost always just sew a seam down the middle. Um, obviously, if you have directional fabric, you're going to want to pay attention to that, um, those kind of things. But with this, it just, I slapped it together really quickly. Um, now let's talk about size. Both your back and your batting need to be quite a bit bigger than your top. Um, and the reason for, there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, everything is going to shift a little bit as you're quilting. And so you don't want to end up short on your batting or your backing as you quilt. So when you see this all laid out, you're going to see how much bigger. Um, again, I when I was planning out my quilt, I made sure that this batting was going to be much bigger than the quilt itself. And then this I made like six inches bigger around the perimeter, although the width might even be even bigger because I just sewed the two panels together. Um, but the length, I did it about, I gave myself at least, you want to give yourself at least two to three inches on each end 
Now, as of right now, I intend to do this as a self binding quilt and that will be a later video and it'll make more sense as we go through that. But for a self binding quilt, you definitely need to give yourself plenty of space because we're actually going to use the backing to do the binding. So um, again, that's my intention. If it doesn't work out, then I'll do just regular binding. But um, as of right now, I intend to do it as a um, self binding quilt. So what you need to be able to put it together is you need um, basting spray and or um, safety pins. Um, and these are special safety pins that have a bend in them. They do make it easier. Um, I don't recommend using just regular safety pens. Just these are inexpensive. Just splurge on these. Um, for the video, I'm going to do a little bit of both. I'm going to do basting spray and the pins. Um, that is overkill. You don't need to do that. You can do one or the other. Um, but I do tend to do it that way. And I thought it'd be good for the video for you to see both options. And then the only other thing we need is you're going to get some blue tape. Um, the, what, this is the one, and this is not top secret. I think a lot of people do it this way. What we're going to do, and we're going to go in another room to do this. You need a nice flat surface like tile or um, uh, hardwood floors. I think this would be pretty tricky on carpet, but I've never tried it. But basically you want a wide open space clean on the floor and we're gonna tape down our backing. And we're gonna tape all around the perimeter. I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'll show it to you guys. But basically what that does is it gives us a nice stable bottom so that we know we've got one layer that is not going to shift on us. It is there to stay. We can move everything else around as needed, but this layer isn't going to shift on us as we're putting everything together. Um, I've tried it without doing it this way, and it's hard to keep things from bunching or from shifting or twisting or turning. Um, this to me is the only way I'll ever do it unless someone comes up with something even smarter. So, like I said, I'm going to go do this and then I will set up the camera on my lovely floor and you guys can see the next steps. The only other thing that I need to say before I forget, both the batting and the quilt top, you can see I kind of just rolled them up. Nothing special, just kind of fold them. Um, this is not a very, this is maybe a little smaller than a twin. So it's not huge. It gets a little more tricky when you've got a huge quilt, but um, just kind of roll it up and have that ready to go. Um, and again, that'll make more sense as we go through. So let me go do this and then we'll head over to the floor. All right, so here it is all taped down. Um, you don't need a whole lot of tape. You can see it's it's not perfect. I mean, there are some wrinkles and stuff, but that'll all work out. Don't worry too much about that. Um, that That's Tugger. He says hi. He might cry a little bit because he very much wants to get on this, but he doesn't like walking on the hardwood floor. So he's probably not going to come over here. But anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I've got my batting, and I'm going to start at the top, and I'm just going to spray. I'm going to take my spray, and I'm going to spray as I'm rolling it out. I'm gonna actually spray onto the batting rather than the fabric. Um, it may depend on what kind of uh, spray adhesive you have, which one you need to do. This one doesn't really matter, and I'd rather do it on here than on that and have run the risk of it getting all over my floor. Um, I'm just gonna do a light spray because, like I said, we're gonna use some pens too. So, oh, and that's a, that's a quilt I made. Um, that's out of my grandfather's, uh, dress shirts or some, you know, some of those squares are his dress shirts. Anyway, um, so as I spray, I'm just going to roll this out. Um, this is going to be pretty big, um, but we will address that as we go. So I'm going to start here at the top. Um, for this, it doesn't really matter how it's centered. We'll worry more about that when we do the top. But for the batting, it, sh it might actually be bigger than what's down here, so we'll just kind of play it by ear. Yes, I'm stepping on it. I should probably take my slippers off. Okay, I moved you because that was not a cute angle. 
Um, so from behind, you don't even see me from behind. So basically I've started it and I'm just spraying the batting and rolling this out. And then as I roll it, I'm just trying to keep it as flat as I can. I actually rolled this up last night so that there wouldn't be any hard creases in it. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be super perfect. Just get it as flat as you can. And um, if you have any major like threads or dirt, you know, you want to get rid of that. Okay, so again, a light spray because we're going to use some pins. But you just keep going just like that. until you get all the way down. Okay, so the batting is all basted on and now I'm going to do the actual quilt top. A couple of things about this. Remember, you do not wanna start over in a corner and you do not wanna start at the top edge. You need to bring it down and you should have cut your backing and your batting big enough to do this. Um, the other thing is, is remember I've got a seam down the middle, pointing to the wrong place. I've got a seam down the middle of my backing. So I, I lined that up with the middle of my quilt so that that seam will run the length of the quilt and stay straight rather, you don't want it to go like this. Um, but again, kind of start at the middle, give yourself plenty of room around the entire perimeter of the quilt. And then you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to take your basting spray, you're going to spray as you roll it out. So I'll do that and then I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right, so we're looking pretty good. We're fully basted. Um, and if you used a lot of spray, you know, you can see I've got some wrinkles over here. We're going to take care of all of those. Um, if you are just basting with spray, you can take your tape off. Some of mine's already come off, but you can take your tape off, roll it up, and be ready to go quilt. But I'm going to show you real quick um, some tips for using pins um, if that's the route you're going to go. Okay, so I'm literally sitting in the middle of the quilt. You want to start, if you're pinning, you want to start in the middle of your quilt and work out. Um, and again, that's just so you can keep things centered and so that things don't shift on you. But basically, I would put at least one in the middle. I, would, I usually start by putting one in the middle of each square. Um, and I don't think you can just see the one I just did. But um, you do one in the middle of, well, you just dump out your pens, one of each square. And then I try to hit the corners where every square comes together. Um, like I said, I don't need to do this since I basted, but I kind of like to do it. It makes me feel better. Um, and I didn't use a ton of the basting spray. So I'll go through, I'm gonna put, like I said, well, hello, hello. I'm gonna put one in the middle of each square and then kind of around the corners and I'll do a few. See how I got kind of bunchy over there? Like I'm definitely gonna put some pins over there. All right, so there it is. It is basted with some spray and I used some pins. I just threw some pins on there. Um, if you were only using pins, you would definitely want to use a lot more than I did. I just kind of threw some on there for extra security. Um, so now I'm just gonna roll it up and um, take it upstairs ready for quilting. Do not cut anything yet. Just leave this like it is for now. All right, guys, there you go. That's how I put together a quilt um, sandwich. The next video I'll do will be on the actual quilting. I'm going to do something very simple on this. I'm just gonna do some straight lines, um, basically just kind of going over, going around the squares. Um, I do have another quilt plan that I'll do some free motion quilting. That's what I prefer. Uh, well, 
not necessarily that I prefer it. It's super fun. Um, oops, sorry. But um, it is, uh, I like the look of it. But I think for this particular quilt, I'm just going to do some straight lines. It's a nice, simple way to finish off a quilt. It is often what I do for quilts that I sell um, because I have them at a price point that is appropriate for that. Um, it, to do the free motion quilting, you kind of have to charge more. And that, I mean, I can, I offer both. So, um, but anyway, I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, taping down your back is the best tip I can give you for this. Other than that, just take your time. Um, make sure everything is straight as you go and it'll all be fine. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.